Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It is time for God's children to praise the Lord. If you find yourself alive, it is time for you to praise the Lord. Good morning. Trust that you had a good night rest and that you are either ready or getting ready to face this beautiful day that the Lord has given us. I begin with the words of the song, Victory in Jesus. The first answer says, I heard an old, old story, how a savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious bloods at toning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. O oh, victory in Jesus, my savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. We are looking at the heroes of the faith and morning by morning, we are going back to their story in the, the, in the Old Testament and sharing with you every morning. We are using Hebrews 11.32 as our base verse where it says, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel and of the prophets. We are down to the man Samuel. And uh, as we look at Samuel, we concluded that Samuel is a man with the prayer of faith. Morning by morning, I am encouraging you not to be fearful, but to be faithful. Last morning, we looked at the prayer of faith must be accompanied by sincere confession of sins and a change of attitude and of life. This morning, we are going to look at the prayer of faith will be challenged by doubt and fear, but will be victorious despite discouragement. For Samuel chapter seven, verse seven and verse number eight, let's see what the scripture says. The Bible said, and when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. The children of Israel knew that God would deliver them. They confessed their sins and they show signs of repentance by pouring water on the ground. The Philistines heard all that they did and they were gathered to Mizpah. The gathering to Mizpah was part of the instruction they received from Samuel. Samuel had given them what was required and he told them that if they will do it, God will deliver them. And they did. They did it all. After doing it, the real battle they must face and the enemy is moving towards them and they are afraid of the enemy. Now to be afraid is the worst thing could happen to you when you are facing warfare. They were so afraid that they call on Samuel to pray and don't stop praying. Verse eight of chapter seven says, and the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to pray unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. The people became fearful. One of the things that God always reminds his children of is not to be afraid, especially his leaders. Whenever there is a challenge up ahead, he will remind them not to be afraid. Notice what God said to Joshua, who was close to Moses and saw all that Moses had to go through as a leader. Moses is now dead and Joshua is called upon to lead. 
So in Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 1, the scripture says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your course. They shall not in a man be able to stand before thee, all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, where I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand, not to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Joshua took God at his word, and moved to action. He refused to see the negative, but he saw the positive. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 said, And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you victory, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord thy God giveth you to possess it. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7, the Bible says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. No one will ever win a battle if he or she is afraid. No one will ever do the job God called him or her to do if he or she is afraid. And here it is, the children of Israel, they are afraid and God is encouraging them not to be afraid. Why were they afraid? They looked at the enemies. They looked at the circumstances. They looked at their problems, their difficulties. And whenever you do that, you will become fearful. Though they had God's word, that they would be successful, they still found themselves afraid. Now watch this. What should they have done? They needed to look away from their enemies to the Lord and see who was greater. They knew they were in trouble, but God was the only way out. No doubt they could only see numbers how many people are in the Philistine army. No doubt they could only see swords, mm, how much more swords they had. Probably they saw the size of the bodies of their enemies. Oh, the men must have been big and strong and that no doubt caused them to be afraid. So in verse number eight, the children of Israel said to Samuel, cease not to pray unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hands of the Philistine. Now, may I ask a question? Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Notice, and uh, Matthew chapter 14, reading from verse number uh, 22. And here we would see the account of Peter 
walking on the water. Matthew 14 from verse 22, the Bible says, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when the even was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, Wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Now, his problem, Peter's problem, was that he doubted that he could continue the journey, no doubt. He was already walking, but he doubted. What could have caused him to doubt? Maybe the rough sea and the high waves. Time has come to an end for me this morning. Tomorrow morning, God's Fear Life, we will pick up on this matter and encourage you a little bit more. But remember, the prayer of faith will be challenged by doubt and fear, but will be victorious despite discouragement. Father, this morning, we thank you, O oh God, that we can go back to your word and learn from these servants of yours and be encouraged. We pray that as you encourage us to be faithful and not to be fearful, that we would see, Lord, that we will be challenged, no doubt. We will see that there are times in our mind we may doubt certain things. We will see that there are times we will get fearful, but we will be victorious if we are operating based on your word. So be with your people this day. Encourage their hearts. Uh, bless, guide, and direct. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.